By now, you know that my friend Eric has invented a new instrument, a chromatic didgeridoo, which he calls the new. I'd like you to learn more about how he's been spreading the word about his instrument. Listen to the interview, and then I'll ask you some questions to check your understanding. Now I know what the new sounds like. Um, obviously, as the inventor, you have been practicing on it. Have you actually composed anything for the new? I've written a few pieces for it. Um, one, I uh, was inspired by my wife called Fender Bender. She got in a car wreck, so uh, <laughs> everybody was okay. Um, and I played a little snippet of that earlier. Um, that, the fast part. And um, So you've written for this. Have you performed? with the new and like for a crowd, for an audience? Yes, I've performed for small audiences here and there um, and uh, I'm looking to perform more in the future. Great, and, and what has the response been from people, from audiences when they hear your compositions? Uh, they, it seems that people really like it, you know, <laughs> they, they enjoy the, the new sounds of it, so. I wish you luck. Thank you. <laughs> Recall my first question in the interview. Which was it? Did you compose anything? Or have you composed anything? I used the present perfect. I asked, have you composed anything for the new? Let's write that. I asked this question to get a simple yes-no answer, and I got it. Eric said, yes, I've written a few pieces. The present perfect uses have or has plus the past participle, which often is the ed form of a verb. Have and the past participle. As you know, there are lots of irregular verbs in English, so often that past participle is the ed form but for irregular verbs, there are irregular forms. This question and the answer illustrate one of the most common reasons why we use the present perfect. We use this verb tense to refer to the general past. Did he compose something? Yes. When? I don't know. The present perfect can refer to past actions, past events. They took place in the past, but we're not naming a specific point in time. So to refer to the general past and general past experience, we use the present perfect. Very often these questions use ever. Have you ever, meaning at any time in the past, done something? Have you ever seen a chromatic didgeridoo? Have you ever heard it before? Let me ask you another question. Has Eric shown his instrument to the public? How? He's performed on the new for audiences. My question was, have you performed for an audience? Let's write that. Eric's answer was, I've performed for small audiences here and there. Let me ask you this. Based on this question and this answer, is it possible that Eric will perform again? Yes. A second reason why we use the present perfect is to suggest that a past action or event may happen again. So it's very likely that this action or event happened a number of times in the past or repeatedly in the past. That's why there's a likelihood it will happen again. And notice how there could be more than one reason for using this verb tense. Just as Eric has performed on the new, he has composed on the new. Both examples show that these events happened in the past, we're not naming a specific time, and we're suggesting that they may occur again in the future.
he might perform more, he might compose more. Okay, so we know that Eric has given public performances on the new. Do you recall what he said about the response? I asked the question, what has the response been? And his answer, it's been good. Let's write that. Okay, again you see, have or has, plus the past participle. And I'm sure you're noticing and remembering that contractions are very common in spoken English. Now why are we using the present perfect here? Well, Eric began to perform. He's performed a number of times. But as soon as he started to perform, he began to receive a public response, feedback. This response began in the past, and this public response continues to now. The response continues at the present time. So we use the present perfect to refer to actions or events that began in the past and continue at the present time. Let me share something else I know about Eric's work with the new. He's received interest from potential buyers. Isn't that good? Now hopefully, Eric will receive more interest from buyers in the future. But I believe the emphasis here is on the connection between the past and the present. We can use the present perfect to refer to an action or event that happened in the past, but somehow it has an effect on the present, on now. Receiving interest happened in the past, but there's an effect on the present. Now Eric knows that he can make more of these instruments, and if he makes another new, he can sell one. Often this event or action in the past is a recent one, and that's why it has some kind of an effect on the present time. Not always, but that may be the case. Remember, we use the present perfect to refer to actions or events that happened in the past at no specific time. And events or states that started in the past and continue at the present. We use this tense for past actions or events, especially recent ones, that have an effect on the present. And we use this tense to refer to actions or events that happened in the past and may happen again in the future. Let's take a moment to review form. Remember that the present perfect uses a present form of the verb have, and then the past participle, which is usually the ed form of the verb. An example of a regular verb is try. And note that we often use contractions. I've tried, he's tried, she's tried, you've tried, we've tried, they've tried. You also need to remember the past participles of your regular verbs. For example, the past participle of be is been, and the past participle of go is gone. Take a look at all the forms for the different pronoun subjects. To form the negative, use a negative form of have in the present, and then add the past participle. For example, I haven't written anything. She hasn't taken the test. With short answers to yes-no questions, remember to use just the auxiliary verb have or has. For example, have you seen the video? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. You know that the present perfect can have a connection between the past and the present. Something can begin in the past and continue to now. For example, the public response to Eric's invention has been good so far. The present perfect progressive can basically do the same thing, but the emphasis will be on an unfinished action, an action that began in the past and continues till the present time. It's ongoing. At the beginning of the interview, I said to Eric, You've been practicing on the new. Have you composed anything? Here's the example of the present perfect progressive. 
have or has, plus been, plus the present participle, the ing form of the verb. Feel the difference. Unfinished, finished. When did Eric compose the pieces? I don't know. I don't even know how many pieces he composed. The act of composing happened in the past, and they're done. Practice began in the past, and it's not finished. It's ongoing. It continues to now. The main use of the present perfect progressive is to refer to actions that started in the past and remain unfinished, now at the present, and there's usually an emphasis on duration. For that reason, you'll see this verb tense used with the adverbs since and for. For example, I've been teaching online since 2007. Since marks a past point in time. I can also say I've been teaching online for the past few years. For expresses duration, a measurement of time. Let's talk about some important differences between the present perfect and the present perfect progressive. First, non-action verbs are not usually used in the progressive, so we express ongoing states or conditions with the present perfect. For that reason, we said, the public response has been good. We don't say, has been being good. Another example, I've known Eric for about six years. I wouldn't say, I've been knowing Eric for about six years, because be and know are non-action verbs. Second, verbs in the present perfect progressive can suggest that an action or event is temporary or very recent. For example, you've been learning about verb tenses in English. Let's talk about form. The present perfect progressive uses a present form of have, plus been, plus the present participle which is the ing form of the verb. Let's use try as our example, and remember that contractions are very common in everyday English. I've been trying, he's been trying, she's been trying, you've been trying, we've been trying, they've been trying. To form the negative, use a negative form of have in the present, plus been plus the present participle, for example, I haven't been practicing. She hasn't been coming. To form short answers to yes-no questions, remember to use the first auxiliary verb. Have you been preparing? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Let me offer you some practice. In the following exercise, you'll have to remember all that you've learned so far about the uses of the present perfect and the present perfect progressive. Practice. Choose the best form of the verb to complete the sentence. 1. Read the sentence to yourself and then I'll tell you the answer. A is not incorrect, but I would choose B. Brayden has been taking violin lessons for the past two years. He enjoys it. The present perfect progressive refers to an action that began in the past and continues to now. With the progressive tense, there's that emphasis on the ongoing action. 2. The best answer is A. So that's what a didgeridoo sounds like. I've never heard anything like it before. The present perfect is the best answer here, because we're referring to a past experience that never happened. It's a reference to the general past, no specific point in time. 3. The best answer is A. Eric has already begun to work on the second new. 
there is no need for a progressive tense here because we're not emphasizing a process or an unfinished action. The act of beginning the work is finished, it's complete, but we're not being specific about when this event took place. But he did begin this work. The best choice is the present perfect. 4. The best answer is C. Haley played very well at her piano recital last week. The simple past is the best answer choice because we're referring to a completed action at a specific point in time, last week. 5. The best answer choice is B. Haley has been playing since the age of six. She's ten now. The present perfect progressive is the best choice because it places emphasis on this action that's ongoing and unfinished. It began in the past and continues to now. 6. The best answer choice is A. Eric has invented other things besides the new. He likes being creative and working with his hands. The present perfect works best here because we're referring to an action that was completed a number of times in the past, and it's likely this action will take place again in the future. 7. The best answer is A. I've heard those musicians play in the park a few times. The present perfect is the best choice here because we're referring to an event that took place a few times in the past and it's likely that this event will take place again in the future. 8. The best answer choice is C. Look, they're playing again today. Let's go listen for a little bit. The best choice is the present progressive because we're referring to an action that is taking place right now, at this moment. 9. The best answer choice here is A. Have they finished that song yet? I heard them working on it last week. We do not need a progressive tense here because we need to emphasize the completion of an action, not an action in progress. So the present perfect refers to an action that took place in the past but not at a specific point. 10. The best answer choice is C. The song is done. They just finished last night. The simple past works best because we're naming a specific point in time, last night. That's all for this lesson. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll join me for the next lesson on verb tenses in English. Happy studies!